It's also in one of the team members of our uh, volunteer team there. So can you just spread your thanks to them as well? They are mostly uh, professionals and students here. So now is the time for QA. Can I just kind of ask you to other speakers come to here and then taking the question from the audience? Okay. Uh, so we have now already one question here. Do we have another? We have like 20 minutes. You can ask the question in English and as well in Chinese. Can you just step here? Thank you. Sorry, we don't have chairs ready here, but it will be short, I guess. So the first question, please. Uh, my name is Sang Chang. I'm the president of the Negative Vote Association. I'm particularly interested uh, in the system from Brazil. Um, our association. Uh, my name is Sam Chai, I'm president of Negative Vote Association in Taiwan. Uh, we uh, have uh, started a proposal initiative in Taiwan to seek signature gathering. And we also have an electronic signature gathering system. Uh, so I'm particularly interested in uh, exchange more with the gentleman from Brazil. Um, our system, as it stands now, can collect signatures on your mobile phone, for example. And if you, uh, if the signer provides a email, uh, he or she would automatically receive a PDF file, completed form with that person's signature. And um, I didn't see that in, in your system structure. So I think we, uh, certainly, I think there are aspects of your system that uh, we can adopt also for our system. Uh, so I would very much like to have uh, uh, more interchange with you so we can exchange some ideas. So your question is? My, my, my question is, uh, is mainly actually security related. I'm very concerned when I collect a lot of personal data. Uh, how do you deal with that issue? Are you concerned at all in terms of hacking? For Marco. Yes. Right. Yes, this definitely is a concern uh, for us. Um, about uh, protecting uh, personal data, uh, we have security protocols to manage the, that personal data database. So uh, we try, of obvious, no uh, inf informatical system uh, is, totally, is totally secure, but we have security protocols to manage those personal data. But, I think there is some other thing uh, in your question that is related about uh, how to uh, in, improve the security of authenticity of a voter, so in, in, in a signer in those, those systems. So with Mudamos, we realize that, that you have different strongness uh, levels of for signatures. Uh, for instance, for uh, citizenship, uh, citizens initiative draft bills, uh, we don't need uh, entirely ver verification because uh, nowadays it's, it, it's done in paper. So it, even in paper, the, the security doesn't uh, verify every one uh, uh, identity on the time that are, they are seen. So, but as we as we uh, we are concerned about this, we create many. Um, log protocols to uh, be able to verify that identity once the signatures arrive to the legislative house. So uh, you can uh, verify the, signa the signature generated by the mobile uh, phones, but uh, as well, you can verify the personal data and the identity of the, those people that uh, signed it for those. I don't know if I answered your question, but okay. Uh, the other one, please. Hello. Uh, I'm Boyan from Institute of Information Science and Business in Houston here. And I have a two questions, and actually they are few. Uh, how do you start from uh, phantom, phantom population? So uh, somehow, somehow uh, the government are not trusted 
uh, and they may they, they may add some uh, uh, phantom population into uh, your system and uh, just add add it into your uh, and add the personal information into your system and uh, and uh, fourth maybe fourth may uh, fake uh, provide a fake fake uh, documentation uh, maybe supporting some some uh, you know, so, uh, some uh, some strategy. And the and the other the other one is how to uh, uh, provide a, a amenity because uh, many people in Taiwan uh, think an amenity is very important because uh, by the way it, it's a, it's a historical nightmare in Taiwan to uh, with an amenity problem so uh, many people want to support some 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 policy, some strategy, but they don't want to be uh, recognized that they are, they are uh, supporting uh, How do you stop this? I, I think the, uh, the problem is for both of you. This is a very good uh, point because, um, but uh, when you become a political actor, especially in Brazil, our constitution uh, refused people to uh, act politically uh, anonymously. Uh, and this is a very, very good point, especially because for our concerns on uh, citizen initiative gratitude. So people uh, don't can. Uh, support uh, some drug deal uh, anonymous. Uh, about the fake uh, fake signatures, um, we designed a system that uh, tried to increase costs to uh, uh, groups that try to hack uh, the signature. So uh, if you, uh, yes, you can uh, input uh, a few uh, fake signatures uh, on the system, uh, but you can uh, input uh, millions of signatures, fake signatures uh, on the system because the cost will increase uh, potentially. So uh, you need to fake one million cell phones to include uh, the million of signatures on the system. And as uh, as much uh, we are concerned about those fake signatures, we create this system that every uh, action is logged, uh, so uh, you have an entirely traceable and trackable system that uh, even some uh, few signature, fake signatures are inputted on the system, uh, we can check they are fake once uh, the, the process, the signatures arrive on the legislative uh, house. So those signatures can be uh, disposed, disposed uh, once they, ever, uh, they, they are fraudulent uh, signatures, they are fraudulent. Okay. Um, so on fraudulent voters or like on fraudulent like hard, uh, electors, I guess, like um, since we're also using like outsource to the government ourselves, which is the university, um, we usually like allow individuals who are like rejected to like appeal to if we reject their like registration status, we allow them to um, appeal to us. And um, alternatively, uh, the reason why we make the system so strict is that we want to like strictly allow the only way, uh, the only formal way to um, for voting. It's like it's like that. We do know that people like especially in electronic engineering fields try to make fake student IDs and try to vote for others and try to use like lost student IDs. So we have, do have keep track of every card we have read and make sure that even though it's like it is stolen or, or your identity is used on the like other aspect or in other elections, we could track down the exact moment, the exact person and to make sure which person like um, 
re misrepresent the exact person. I, I guess this is the best part we could do, especially in the um, in the ID issuing nation. Con in contrast to like in U.S., which even you need to register to vote, and they don't even have an idea on how many exact voters there. I guess. So I guess the core question here is how do you build trust from the citizens or the people with the new digital tools or platforms? So uh, to make them feel safe or to, to have their concern dealt with, with different kind of system building in the, the, the new platform, that's very important. So we can hear from uh, GJ Kim from there because they're doing that only online community. Uh, organization, but they are doing uh, offline events as well. So, how do you tackle the problem, the trust between you and the uh, participants? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a very um, good question, so like, serious to resolve. And uh, we have four platforms right now, and uh, three of platforms uh, he will uh, going to give you answer. And another platform we are a partnership with uh, Democracy So I'm going to yeah give an answer a little bit. So let me give this microphone to my colleagues. Uh, hello, I'm Green Hair from Party, and then uh, yeah, um, I can say just. We have like basic uh, like encrypt encryption in our system, like just SSH or like some basic hacking uh, security in our framework. But uh, like we are luckily, it is okay right now. We we didn't have like fake ID right now, but in our free system, we not like government of system. But in government system, they have some like uh, verification in ID. And so we don't care about it, but these three of our platforms, now we are like thinking about uh, applying the blockchain, and then and we are like technically thinking about the ongoing process right now. And that, that's why I am here, to <laughs> ask you how to be safer in like, this experience right now. So yeah, very thank you to ask me, ask us about that problem, and then because of your ideas and experience, I think we we have to deal with more trust with other citizens right now. Well, thanks for that. Okay. okay, and about the... Uh, sorry, sorry. Please. So, the, uh, about the uh, platform Democracy So, uh, the, to be honest, maybe it's kind of off the record. Like when it, <laughs> it just started... Um, it's that okay, streaming. Yes, okay. <laughs> Uh, it started in the um, end of 2017, and kind of no one expected uh, this will be popular and uh, uh, citizens will be engaged. So like I'm not so sure like how we are uh, secure about the all the data and uh, the, the people uh, how we make people insecure. But since uh, this platform grows. So we have idea about like adapting blockchain system in next year, and then we're dealing with the, all the security problem more seriously. Also, um, between government and, and us, we just keep meeting face to face and uh, see how what we uh, want and what we see the difference. And just we well, there is only one way to keep talking and like uh, finding the the, the middle uh, middle zone. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Hi. Um, so I had always been a fan and an advocate for direct democracy through technology. And so thank you all for all, all of your work uh, to get us there. But I have grown more, more and more weary in recent years uh, by looking at what had happened with Facebook. Uh, because you know, in the in the beginning, it, it became a really great tool for democracy to grow. But in recent years, as people have been able to more easily and more quickly put things out there, uh, more and more misinformation had taken place, and democracy suffered as a result. Um, so my question to all of you is: um, Would you view um, if one day? Uh, it, all, all it takes for someone to participate in a democratic institution is a simple press of a like button on Facebook uh, as a net positive or negative. 
And if that does become possible, do you see any uh, process necessary, similar to a waiting period before a gun purchase or some, something of similar vein uh, as necessary? Okay, um, I'll, I'll go first. It's like, um, I do realize that when we're discussing like um, voting process or like um, public um, advocating, it's like, it's really usual for you to like having a thought that you'll just like give up on the crowd and just like uh, retreat your own life. It's, it's quite easy to have that kind of sense of feel, feeling in recent years. It's like, um, uh, but eventually I discovered that um, whether in these like um, process that we are trying to change things, um, even though they are like harsh critics or polarizing comments, it's just like a single, a little voice that got like amplified throughout the social network. So if, if I mentioning that if all it takes is a single click or like on social network, is that a net positive for democracy? I'd say um, as in my experience is probably yes, is that most of our most of our like members or most of our people around our own country or around the world, it's like good, well intentioned, but just not well informed. So I, I, I believe that at, I believe that as long as we do try to like keep everyone informed and popularize with um, enough information, those who are like um, good enough or well intentioned enough to like um, gather this kind of information would eventually. Um, eventually make the right choice. And if that wasn't the case, and um, what else you could do in a democratic em environment, I guess. Yeah, so uh, my approach is just like, I, I believe it's a positive way to look toward a society, and I I'm not sure what the others think. That, that's what that makes me to like constantly to do, like to bring changes to this society. It's a very, very good question, and uh, many enthusiastic, demo, uh, direct democracy enthusiasts uh, thinking about one day we will have this kind of uh, one click, uh, one click democracy. But uh, I wouldn't uh, think uh, that I would. I wouldn't imagine to drive democracy to that direction. Especially because we are very creative beings in this world and only a quick click or a vote can define an entire human being. Uh, so um, I think, I, I was thinking now about the last keynote we had uh, about uh, create a uh, tools to make democracy thing and tip uh, uh, no better uh, ways to uh, to to create uh, the actions in democracy thing and tip or, or 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 it means uh, get it easier to people to participate but i think these ways of uh, create uh, means of interaction uh, as as we get technology uh, improvements, should uh, goes in the direction that we can explore more more, more our self uh, self uh, self meaning, and so we have uh, many improvements on artificial intelligence and others ways that could learn more about how we uh, uh, see ourselves as human beings. So I think we can use the, the, these uh, technologies to improve democracy as social systems uh, and to be able to gather all the entire complex, complexity uh, we can be as a society. Uh, so, yeah. Hi, 
Hi, um, this is a question for Mrs. Zhang. Uh, as far as I know, because I was an NTU student before, and at the end of each semester, you have an anonymous rating system that you can rate your professors. And when I was in college, it was about maybe <laughs> 2010 or 11, there was an incident that the system claimed to be anonymous, but it was not really. And the professor can actually see the students' comments about them. And the following semester, it was a, like a huge blast. <laughs> like everyone was like, oh. so after a few years of that, uh, the e-voting uh, was on the road. And when I was, in grad school by then. And I was like, when the when the e-voting first came out, I was like, I don't trust the system at all. I do not trust it at all. So I'm curious, have you ever encountered any uh, suspicious students, like they don't trust your system? And is, is it hard for you to promote the e-voting? Yeah, um, yeah that, that's why the primary <laughs> case, that why we are trying to separate the two systems, is that uh, even though uh, even though the, a breach has occurred, we're trying to say, um, once we're verified with your information, since we are required by law to make an like, electors like, list that each elector like, vote in a designated station. So we're required to do this list, but as long as we um, associated you with an authorization code, um, we're not going to use this code to directly vote in the vote server. And the vote server just treat it as like a one time ticket that you could just, just like use it up. So like uh, each time you use an authorization code, for example, if you have five ballots, and it's just like a, it's just like a variable that in increments. So if you are using uh, all your five votes, this authorization code just record five, and it's used up, and the exact vote is uh, written to a file, like randomly committed. And so we are trying to make the process like easy to be done, but hard to like back tracing. And you'll need a, a complete like a cooperation between the two servers, staff and matching all those timestamps to track and one individual's like own um, voting system, uh, vote. And it'll be quite difficult if you have like a large scale of rush, since like everyone is voting at the same period, we all have no idea which line is, which line of vote is which ones. So, and we are trying to bring this like through it's a matter of trust, so we're trying to make this, these things like more easier and more clear to those like illustrations you could see. Um, those are the illustrations I'm um, um, convincing my like fellow colleagues of electoral boards that this system could work. Uh, we'll do this like every semester to our supervisors from the legislative branch, and we'll try to make it as transparent as possible. And if we have a, a technology incident such as like a fail hardware or something, we'll just like write an intensive report and try to make it clear. And even though there's like, you know, there's like still political um, rumors or opponents who would accuse you for fraud and activities, I, I believe at, at least for the hackers or the, for the tech, uh, tech, technicians here, as long as we make it really clear and we'll, we'll be like free from <coughs> any kind of charges, I guess. And that's pri probably the, Primarily, the limit of the uh, whole budget, the whole technology, and the whole like staff, and that limits what we could have done at the moment. But we're trying to constantly improve, and at primarily that's the major of the students' belief and currently. So I guess eventually we'll have a good outcome. Thank you. Time's up. But I'll take the last question. Yeah, uh, I'm Federico from Italy, and I have a question to Marco and to GJ, because you both developed um, very brilliant uh, platforms, but the problem is uh, usually is how to reach out people, um, because I, I see that, I foresee that in many cases the issue is that we develop brilliant tools, and um, um, but we talk and we uh, are in contact with small niches of people. So um, how could you solve this issue? How could you reach out uh, a larger audience? So um, Udemos, uh, on its uh, first uh, month of life, we were surprised because 
Once we la launched Mudamos, we had a viral uh, access, and in the uh, in the first month, we got two hundred thousand downloads of the app. Uh, it was not planned as we <laughs> could plan this, uh, but uh, as I said on my presentation, uh, in Brazil we had a lack of participation, so. And uh, that was got viral one uh, when uh, one man uh, with her uh, with his uh, mobile uh, record a video uh, with one of the promoters of the uh, that was one of the creators of uh, uh, Marlon Hayes that's a former uh, uh, judge in Brazil and was one of the creators of the most famous uh, laws. Uh, Citizens uh, 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 place it uh, called Ficha Limpa. And this man recorded the video and said, Oh, now you can uh, write your own laws uh, directly uh, without politicians. <laughs> <laughs> and that video got viral in many uh, WhatsApp networks. And so people uh, only heard about Mudamos and got in their uh, app stores and searched for Mudamos, so Mudamos uh, became uh, one of the most uh, uh, famous uh, apps on that uh, month on App Store, so it, 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 it also got, uh, this, uh, it was in the front page of App Store, it was, it was crazy, it was very uh, crazy. So, uh, but now, after this, this viral uh, waves, we are facing the challenge to getting more people into the platform. So uh, we are trying to uh, engage people to be part of um, uh, of that that this transformation, uh, asking for other people to to came uh, to the platform. But I don't think uh, we will got another viral uh, wave. Now we started to uh, create a more uh, a structural basement to uh, keep uh, new people uh, coming to the platform uh, regularly. And because of this, we have created Virada Legislativa and other uh, grassroots uh, actions to structure Mudamos uh, as a platform. But yeah, I don't have a, a, a real answer to you, uh, but uh, we, we, we got this advantage that people in Brazil uh, are very polarized and angry with politicians, so uh, yeah, they, they, they want to become part of this uh, political change. And we, we, can, we, we could uh, take this advantage to uh, foster move Yeah, uh, that's also one of our uh, biggest concern and always uh, uh, having having more questions. So um, in Korea, uh, in Seoul, 10 million, 10 million people live, and uh, maybe when uh, Seoul government asks something, then maybe around 1,000 or 2,000 uh, people only were just attended. So uh, now this platform we strongly connected to the government, uh, the government or executive, but not connected to Seoul Council or education, uh, public uh, education office yet. So it's very first stage of just a baby step of uh, a platform to grow. But if we connected to the council, executive, and uh, citizen uh, strong, uh, uh, simultaneously, and then uh, see Seoul citizens see if I vote and if I just um, uh, just a certain raise their opinion about it, then maybe a few months later something actually changed. Then I don't think no one will regret, uh, neglect about that. So this uh, and also like uh, we don't always we don't only emphasize on the online or digital platform. 
So if somebody also want to have their own issues or um, social and uh, agenda, then we bring people on the, uh, on the offline and face to face and then let them talk and then we just uh, give them how to use this platform. So uh, the one a section of the democracy is always uh, uh, citizen suggestion. So there's just nothing. Uh, you just log in with your Facebook or uh, the one of uh, Facebook other uh, popular platform in Kakao Talk in Korea. You click it and then you just type the, the title about your problem and then um, and then uh, writing about what is your issue and nothing else. So uh, so the citizen raise the issue. Then the, the government or the each department will uh, read everything and then sort it out. Uh, what this suggestion will, uh, will be uh, belong to. Yeah. So now it's working on what maybe if this uh, platform uh, grow two to three years, then yeah, everyone will engage in that. Thank you, thank you, thank you, our speakers and your questions. Just give us the final round of applause. Thank you, everyone. So remember, if your country got zero, you are here to make friends. So please, to share your information, your questions, your experience with three other speakers that will be around at the summit. And now, enjoy our lunch. Thank you, everyone.